and welcome to another tutorial. My name is Tanmay Bakshi, and this time we're going to be going over how you can use the IBM Watson visual recognition tooling, and plus this is the new tooling that they have just released. Uh, in fact, let me tell you a little bit about the backstory behind all of this. Uh, so it actually all began in around November of 2016, uh, and in November, uh, an IBMer, Josh Zeng, uh, and of course thanks to him, he is a product manager at IBM Watson, and so he actually reached out to me and he said, hey, uh, we know that you've been using visual recognition for some time now, uh, and we've just released this new visual recognition tooling, uh, well not released, but they started beta testing this new visual recognition tooling, and they wanted me to test it out, you know, do some beta testing, uh, be one of the first users, and so of course I was glad to do that because I knew at the time that uh, the Watson visual recognition command line utilities weren't even out, and it wasn't really that easy to get a Watson classifier, Watson visual recognition classifier trained. Because through the utilities, I mean even now through the utilities, it's not as easy as something like visual recognition tooling. So as you know, other Watson services do have tooling that uh, allow developers to easily train them. Uh, of course feed their data into it, train Watson, and then get output as well. Uh, and so the visual recognition tooling does practically the same thing. And so of course, while I was using the visual recognition tooling, I got really interested and I asked Josh if I could actually create a YouTube video about this. Uh, and while unfortunately it wasn't the correct time to do that because it wasn't officially released, now however it has been officially released and you can actually use this visual recognition tooling in order to train your classifiers and in order to create visual recognition services. So now though, I'm going to be showing you an example of how I was able to use this tooling in order to create a Watson visual recognition classifier which can successfully classify among different types of flowers. Today we're going to be using four different species of flowers and so we're going to be feeding in quite a few images of these four species. We're going to be feeding in images of roses, all right, we're going to be feeding in images of daffodils, roses and daffodils. Uh, we're going to be feeding in iris plants. And of course, we're going to be feeding in the sunflowers as well. And so what we're going to do is we're going to give uh, around 50 to 100 images of all of these different species of plant into the Watson visual recognition tooling. And basically what we're going to do here is we're going to have that visual recognition tooling as a web interface that we can access. And then what we're going to do is we're going to feed these into the tooling. And then once they're fed into the tooling, the tooling will use the REST API for visual recognition and it will then go to the visual recognition service through that REST API. And that is how this entire system is going to work. And so now again, instead of having to use CURL commands, or instead of having to use the command line utilities, or having to use a language specific SDK, all you need to do is upload your images to this VR uh, tooling over here. And then once it's done training, you can then continue to use that classifier ID with the same API key among all of your different applications, whether that be powered by the SDK, the REST API directly, or even the tooling itself. And so now, without any further ado, let's get into how you can actually build this system. And so now, without any further ado, let's get into the coding. All right, so welcome back to the Mac part. And now I'm going to be showing you how exactly you can use this brand new visual recognition tooling service provided by IBM. Let's take a look. So now if I go over here, as you can see, even before we get into visual recognition, uh, the service and how we can use its new tooling, first I'd like to show you a little bit about the training data that we're actually feeding into the visual recognition service.
Now, as you can see in this folder here, I've got four folders in it. And these four folders actually are titled Daffodil, Iris, Rose, and Sunflower. And in each folder, they, it contains one, around 100 images of that type of flower. As you can see over here for daffodils, we can go over to Iris. This contains Iris plant images. And again, these are just Iris plant free images gathered from Google. Uh, and so if we go back to roses, as you can see, all different types of roses. There are some, you know, uh, red roses, purple pro roses, uh, pink roses, white roses, etc., etc. Uh, and then if we go back over here, as you can see in the sunflowers, we've got all different types of sunflowers, even ones with uh, sunglasses on, as you'll see later in the data set. Um, but if we go down, as you can see, we've got all these different types of sunflowers. And again, these are not strictly only sunflowers. We may contain a little bit of noise in this data. Like, for example, this image right here. Uh, because again, these are just images scraped off of Google Images uh, for free. Uh, and so what's happening is we're basically just trying to tell visual recognition what the basic sketch of a sunflower looks like by giving it most of the data that doesn't contain noise and then some noise in between that it's able to filter out. Uh, and so as you can see, eventually, uh, these are all of our sunflowers. All right, so those are our four, uh, these are our four directories containing those images. And outside we then have in this root directory uh, four more images, not just, not, not folders, we just have image files. Uh, and these images are named Daffodil, Iris, Rose, and Sunflower. If I go through these again, as you can see, these are individual images of one iris, one, uh, one daffodil, one rose, and one, or one sunflower field. Uh, and so one more thing I'd like to point out here though, uh, is that these are going to be our test images and these images are not contained in these folders. And what I've gone ahead and done after this is I've actually compressed each folder into a zip file right after that. And as you can see, these are all of our zip files uh, and that is what we are going to be using to train the visual recognition service. All right, so now we can go over to the Bluemix here. As you can see, I went to the Bluemix catalog and I was able to create a new visual recognition service. And once you have created your service and once you have those credentials, you are then ready to actually find your API key. Now, one more thing I'd like you to know is that eventually the tooling will be available on this manage page in your service uh, near this developer resources pane uh, or, you know, somewhere on this page here. The only reason that it's not currently available is since I'm actually recording this just before it's officially released. And that means that it isn't technically available in Bluemix just yet. But what I'm going to show you will have the uh, almost the exact same UI, uh, exact same sort of interface uh, for using the tool. It's just that I cannot access it through Bluemix. Instead, I have to access it through URL. But what I'm going to do first is I'm actually going to find my API key and then I'm going to copy it and go over to the Watson Visual Recognition Tooling. You will not need to go to the Watson Visual Recognition Tooling.mybluemix.net page, although I am because again, this will be available through Bluemix. I'm going to click on API key, enter in my API key, click enter, and as you can see, it is going to bring me into the Watson Visual Recognition Tooling. Then inside of this tooling, I'm ready to create a new classifier. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to call this classifier Flower YouTube Classifier. Now what we're going to do is we're going to give this four different classes, and these classes are going to be called Rose, Iris, I'm going to add a new class, call it Daffodil, and I'm going to add a new class and call this one Sunflower. Now, of course, we don't need to upload any negative images as these are optional, and we only want our classifier to distinguish between different types of flowers, in this case, Rose, Iris, Daffodil, and Sunflower, and not tell me if something is a flower, uh, and if it is what, what species of flower, what type of flower, uh, but we do not want, want it to tell us whether it's not a flower. Uh, that, that's a feature that we do not want with this classifier, so we are not going to be uploading a negative data set. So I'm going to go back here and I'm going to take the rose.zip file and I'm going to drag it into my rose class in the tooling. Once that is done, I'm going to go back and do the exact same thing for the iris. Once that's thing done, I'm going to do that for the daffodil. And once that's done, I'm going to do it for the sunflower.
One more thing I'd like to note here is that the you can only upload up to 50 megabytes uh, of, of images uh, in these zip files to Watson Visual Recognition. That's the most uh, that it can take at once. So one thing I'd like you to note here uh, is that I have not actually, I guess you could say, optimized my JPEG, uh, JPEG files. That's why these are actually relatively large files, 41 megabytes uh, in total for around 100 images. Uh, these, of course, can be shrunk even further using some sort of JPEG optimizer which you can get via homebrew or you can download by the Mac App Store if you're using Linux or Windows there are alternatives for that as well there are also online tools so again if you have a lot of different training data uh, and you want to feed it all into visual recognition a few things you can try uh, you know reducing your file size is key whether that be through optimization uh, making your images smaller or something of that sort again uh, at, at the end of the video I will be giving you my contact information so if you'd like to contact me uh, and I can help you out with uh, your visual recognition uh, training. All right, so now what I'm going to do though is I'm going to click on create and now the visual recognition tooling will take all of these files and upload it to the Watson Visual Recognition API. Now, once it goes into the API, we will be ready to start using the classifier after it trains. And so now, though, this is currently uploading our images to the API. Now, this may take several minutes to complete due to the fact that the image files are not small. So I will speed up the clip now, and then we will be right back with the training classifier. All right, so as you can see, it is done uploading our images to the API, and it is now training our classifier. Now, all we need to do is wait for the visual recognition service to be done training our classifier, and once it is complete, we'll be able to use our classifier and test other images against the model to see how it performs. All right, I will be back in just a few minutes, right as my classifier is done training, and then we'll take a look at the performance of the model. All right, so as you can see, I'm back again, and the visual recognition tool is done training the classifier. And so now what we can do is we can actually go ahead and give it our test images, and we should be able to see the results that it has for each one. Let's actually begin with the daffodil image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the daffodil image and drag it over to the tooling and drag it into this box under our classifier. It's going to upload, and as you can see, Watson Visual Recognition responds with a confidence value. As you can see, uh, it says that this indicates uh, not, not necessarily confidence, uh, but this, is, this looks 83% like a sunflower to Watson. Because what's actually happening is this technically isn't a confidence or an accuracy value. What instead is happening is Watson is actually taking, uh, it's actually creating four different models internally. And what it's doing is it's taking, let's say, the first model, and it's saying, okay, let's just say we have daffodil as one class and everything else as one class. And it'll compare daffodils to everything else. And then we have three other models that do the exact same thing. It'll compare roses to everything else, irises to everything else, and sunflowers to everything else. It'll then use that as basically uh, an ensemble of different models. And it'll use those in order to find which one actually has the most probability of being correct. It creates this, uh, it creates this collection of probabilities from which it then selects. Uh, and in, in this case, daffodil turns out to be the correct answer. But if you see, rose actually is not far behind. And and the reason for this is because if you think a, think a little bit about this, and if you think about a rose, and if you were to look at this image, you would see a little odd resemblance to a rose. And I mean, if you were, again, look at this, uh, it has a little bit of that uh, rose pattern. But the thing is, it has more of a daffodil pattern. And that's why Watson is able to tell us that this is indeed a daffodil, or at least that's what I believe. And so that's why uh, Watson is able to classify this as a daffodil. Then we can go ahead and take the iris image. Uh -huh, of course, I didn't want to uh, open that up, but okay, sure. So we can take the iris image, drag that into the box. It's going to upload the image to Watson. As, as you can see, again, these, these four models have returned this probability that iris is most probably the correct answer because it's able to find the iris pattern, the iris color, uh, and what's usually in the background of these iris images. Uh, it's able to take everything into account using its you know, internal algorithms, uh, and it's then able to actually return to us that iris is most probably what is inside of this image. 
we can then go ahead and take the rose, drag that in, and as you can see, in just a moment, it tells us that rose is the correct answer. Again, these flowers are not in the training set. These are This is a separate test set uh, that we have not trained Watson visual recognition to understand, yet it is able to tell us that this most probably contains a rose, even despite the black background, uh, despite the little water droplets on the rose, uh, despite, you know, all, these, uh, all this noise around the rose, we're still able to determine that this contains a rose because of the rose patterns that can, that are contained inside of this image. And then, of course, now here comes a slightly, a little bit more difficult one. Uh, something that, uh, something that, uh, something that really uh, shows you the power of the service. Uh, apart from the daffodil one, the sunflower one is a little bit challenging as well. And the, the reason I'm going to say this is because of color. Uh, and it's not necessarily because, hey, it's going to be unable to find, you know, sunflower patterns. It's going to be able to do that perfectly. It'll be, be able to find, okay, we've got so many sunflowers here, this is probably a sunflower field, and return sunflower is the correct answer. But as you see, there's a lot of conflicting noise here with the uh, red sky and the blue sky here in the clouds. And, and the other uh, other plants around here, all the other vegetation here. Uh, as you can see, basically, this has a lot of noise, but yet, technically, if we were to take this image and drag it into the service, we should be able to get an answer. And it should be sunflower. So again, it's uploading the file, and as you can see, again, Watson does tell us that Sunflower is most probably the correct answer of what's currently in this image, or what this image contains, out of the four classes that it was, able, that it was trained to recognize inside of images. And again, note, because of the technique that it uses here, Watson Visual Recognition is not able to say, hey, this contains a sunflower and a rose, or a sunflower and an iris. It's not able to say, hey, it contains both of these, or three of these, or nothing. Uh, what happens is Watson Visual Recognition instead, uh, it can only find individual objects inside of those images. Uh, and so, for like for example, if you wanted to create a classifier that could detect sunflowers and roses together, you would have to create an entirely new class for sunflower rose, because then you would give it images that contain both a sunflower and a rose, and then it would be able to classify it as that class. Just a few notes about the visual recognition service, but that's what makes it so interesting and so great and fun and easy to work with. Again, this is the brand new tooling and uh, I mean, as I like to say, the visual recognition service is actually a great service to use as your first Watson service uh, because of its simplicity, because of how great you can just give it a little bit of training data and it's able to take all that, learn it, and then take new test data and, and give you your answers and uh, with good accuracy as well. And so now this makes it even more user friendly and even better uh, to use as your first Watson service and generally to use uh, as a professional tool uh, for your applications. And now the visual recognition service has just gotten so much better. And that's what I had to cover in this tutorial. Thank you very much for watching. That's going to be all. Of course, though, if you enjoyed this tutorial and if it was able to help you out, please do make sure to leave a like down below. And if you believe this could help anybody else you know, like your friends or family, make please make sure to, leave, to share the video as well. All right, that's going to be it for this tutorial. But if you have any comments, feedback, suggestion, uh, suggestions, or questions, you can leave them down in the comments below. Email them to me at tajimanny@gmail.com or tweet them to me at tajimanny. All right, so that's going to be it for this video. But if you'd like to see a lot more content like this, and of course, if you uh, want to show your support for the channel, please do make sure to subscribe as well, as it really does help out a lot. And if you'd like to be notified via email and Google notification whenever I release a new video, please do make sure to turn on notifications as well by clicking the little bell icon beside the subscribe button. Alright, so thank you very much for watching today. That's going to be all for this tutorial. Goodbye.